Gabby Hanna, wrong even when she's kind of right. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kristen. If you are new here, here I like to talk about social and cultural issues, usually through the lens of pop culture and public figures. Usually, but not always. Sometimes I do change it up. Today's video is going to be going over one of Gabby Hanna's docu-series episodes. I want to say it's episode number five or four. It's the one that's called Trisha Paytas Keeps Lying. My wine glass has returned to my channel, although today it is holding seltzer, not wine. Um, I do like having a little bit of a prop. And you'll also notice I'm no longer holding my microphone. I figured out how to increase the volume of my videos without screwing up other things. And so I'm hoping that I don't need to like hold it next to my mouth anymore. We'll see how this goes, okay? So thank you for being here. If you are new here, I hope you will consider subscribing, commenting, liking, or disliking the video. And yeah, let's just get into it. So I honestly believe that this is the episode Gabby should have led with and that some of the episodes she has already put out, she maybe didn't need to put out because in my opinion, this episode does the best by far of humanizing her, getting her point across and showing us that like maybe she was misrepresented in some ways, whereas some of her other videos, I think they kind of just dig the hole a little deeper. Don't get me wrong, she does dig herself in a hole a little bit with this video. I do have quite a few problems with the video that I'm going to talk about, but overall this video, if you watch it to the end, you end it kind of thinking like, wow, that really sucked for her. Um, you know, it makes you, it, 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 the video achieved its goal in my opinion. It just, there were still things left to be desired in my opinion. So I'm going to open this video by talking about the good parts of the video and some of the takeaways that I got out of it that I consider to be positive for Gabby because I do want to be fair towards her. I don't want to like only talk bad about her on this channel. That's not really my goal, even though unfortunately YouTube seems to only want to blow up the videos where I'm talking about things she did wrong. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, I've talked about how social media incentivizes us to be jerks to each other. And that's just one way, frankly. Um, but even though I would get rewarded by doing just another scathing video about her, I am going to defend her a little bit first. And after I defend her, then I'm going to talk about my problems with the video. So let's go. So first of all, even though this episode is about Trisha Paytas, she did spend the first 18 minutes again, talking about things other than Trisha Paytas. A lot of it, in my opinion, was irrelevant to the video, but some of it was not. And that is the portion about storytelling. Gabby talks about how ever since she started her YouTube channel, she has been kind of a storyteller. She's done a lot of story time videos and she mentions a few different ones. Really, she mentions one that I can think of, but I think she mentioned some others. In the storytelling section of the video, she talks about how she found it helpful to make a story out of different, you know, pieces of her life that were kind of hard for her to process. And she found that if she could tell a story, make it humorous, make it coherent, that would help her kind of to process her feelings and being able to move on. And so that's why she has so many story times up on her channel. That and, you know, they did well for her as well. But she mentions that as more and more criticism about her came out and she faced more and more public critique, you know, kind of following the rice gum situation, which frankly, I don't think she was in the wrong, at least not with how things turned out. And then on, it was just scandal after scandal after scandal and just everybody talking bad about her. And all of this negative attention and criticism made her feel scared to keep telling stories. And so she kind of pulled back from that, which I believe her. Um, even if I think a lot of the criticism was valid, the sheer volume of criticism would be scary and it would probably make me afraid as well. So I, I thought this was good that she included it and that she talked about it because I felt like it really humanized her and it kind of showed her side of things in a way that resonated with me and hopefully with the audience too. I also felt like her point about the storytelling and how telling stories helps her to process her emotions and just her experiences made a lot of sense as to like why she's doing this docu-series in the first place because she feels like she needs to make a coherent narrative and story that makes sense for her um, and in the process, you know, 
she wants to be able to put that story out there as well. Um, so I think that's kind of why I think she should have led with this video because this whole bit about how storytelling is used for her in processing emotions and feelings would have been a good way to preface this docu-series, right? Because then it would make sense why she's making it as opposed to it just seeming like her dragging up old events where she made herself look kind of bad and then trying to spin it, which is what I got out of the first multiple episodes of the video or docu-series. She also talked about Trisha Paytas. That's what the title of this video was. So you would have thought the whole video would be about Trisha Paytas, but I already learned from the other episode that, um, at least the other one that I talked about on here, that she does not spend the first part of the video talking about anything related to the title, apparently. She did eventually get to Trisha Paytas. And when she did, she kind of brought up basically all the receipts that supported her side of the story. So she was able to demonstrate that she and Trisha did talk quite a lot. They, they were arguably friends. If not friends, you could at least see how Gabby thought they were friends. Um, which, okay, fair. And she, you know, brought up screenshots to show like just places where Trisha straight up lied to her in the, in the podcast episode that they did together where it just seems like Trisha's telling bold faced lies that like are easily proven false if you just pull up screenshots. Um, so she did a pretty good job of laying out like how she felt like Trisha kind of manipulated her and made her look crazy when she wasn't wrong about a lot of it. Um, so I think that was good that she kind of defended herself a little bit there. Um, there were some th details that she brought up that I didn't really think were relevant, like pointing out like, Trisha posted about me first, I didn't start the fight kind of thing, and just rehashing some details that like don't need to be rehashed, frankly. Um, but I get why she included it all because she paints a picture of, you know, multiple times you see where Trisha says one thing and then does another, or Trisha will say one thing in text privately to you, but then a different thing to your face on a public forum, like on that podcast. And so she did a good job of just kind of demonstrating that like Trisha, Trisha's lies, um, which we know, everybody knows that Trisha lies, but it's just, it's useful to keep that in mind, I guess, when you're taking Trisha's word about Gabby. Um, so that was good, I guess. It, it, again, it, like I said, it made her look better and it made you kind of see Gabby's side a little bit more. I do think that she was selective with some of the screenshots that she showed. Like there were some screenshots that she noticeably did not bring up, which I assume she didn't bring up because they made her look bad. But you know what? This is her video defending herself. So I mean, maybe that's fine. So that's the good parts of the video. That's what I think really shown in this video and I think made Gabby look good. Now let's talk about my problems with the video and some of the things that were said and some of the places where I think she kind of missed the mark. So first things first, I've kind of already mentioned this, but the first 18 minutes had nothing to do with the title. I just think that's really annoying. That's just me. Um, but not only did they have nothing to do with the title, I didn't, there were some of the, some things said in the first 18 minutes that I, I feel like I need to bring up. So she talked for a while about Bad Baby and how she is getting hate and people who are criticizing her are just like haters who are jealous of her success and you know she talks about how she used to be a hater who was jealous of people's success and that's why she gets it and blah 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 and says people need to just leave bad baby alone and let her do her thing and blah 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 and then then she talks about like britney spears and free britney and then she talks about like Meghan markle briefly and randomly starts not really randomly i kind of get the train of thought that she was following, but then she starts talking about how like black women in America are incredibly disrespected and are often dismissed. And she brings up like mortality rates for black mothers, um, all of which is true. Black women are incredibly disrespected and are often dismissed. And um, mortality rates are unacceptably high for black mothers in America, especially considering the state of medicine that we that we are in nowadays. Um, but it, she, she brought it up to like, follow up like and like conclude her whole thing about bad baby and britney spears and Meghan markle um which was weird because she had just finished dismissing all of bad baby's critics as haters um when in fact a lot of bad baby's critics are black women who take issue with bad baby's um racially insensitive behavior and cultural appropriation so gabby started off the video 
dismissing black women's critiques of Bad Baby, and then later says that black women are often dismissed and disrespected. Um, Ironically, later in the video, she also says that people should try to have more self-awareness, and I think that's advice she should take. Um, I don't know, I just, I didn't feel like I could not respond to that portion of the video because I do think, I don't know, it's weird to bring up um, issues that black women face when you were just displaying ignorance about the issues. So, I don't know, I didn't like that, okay? Another part of this video I took issue with is that she basically seems to stand by what she did in relation to Trisha Paytas and um, the the herpes debacle when she told Jason Nash that Trisha might have herpes. And um, Gabby basically said, like, you know, if someone you knew was sleeping with someone who you knew had an incurable or deadly disease, you need to tell that person because otherwise you're withholding information and you're putting them at risk and blah, 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 blah. And I just, um, I don't agree with her logic. And I also found the way that she phrased everything to be incredibly stigmatizing about, you know, STDs. And those are already stigmatized enough. We don't really need Gabby making it worse. Like, she's already doing that to ADHD. Can she please not stigmatize any more medical issues? Please. Um, but she did. And here's, here's my thing. Here's what I want to tell everybody. Um, other people's sexual health is literally none of your business, okay? It was Jason Nash's responsibility to talk with Trisha Paytas about their sexual health and about, you know, what things they did and did not want to do. It was not Gabby's place to insert herself in their business. It was wrong. Gabby was not doing the right thing. Gabby was not, you know, helping someone out. That's not true. And Gabby talks about like, well, people lie all the time about, you know, their STD status, which is like stigmatizing, first of all. But second of all, okay, let's say Trisha lied to Jason. What good does it do for you to tell Jason to ask Trisha again so that Trisha can lie again? Like, what? You telling someone that you heard something through the grapevine does nothing to prevent lying. So the, the logic doesn't make sense. And again, it's it wasn't her business. You should not insert yourself into other people's business like that. Um, and you definitely shouldn't be doing it with like a hero complex like you're saving your friend from some disease. Um, it's just weird and it was wrong. Gabby was wrong in that situation, full stop. Um, also, ironically, when all of that came out, Gabby said something to the effect of Trisha and I weren't friends and so I didn't feel comfortable talking to Trisha about it. Interesting, because now Gabby is very insistent that they were friends. So, I don't know. That's just kind of a side note though. So my next problem with this video is that um, she accuses everyone and their mother of psychological abuse and nar narcissistic abuse. Like, liter like, she literally said that she was in a toxic relationship with millions of people who were putting her through psychological abuse. I guess that is... I guess she's referencing um, the period of time where she was going through a lot of drama. It was like, you know, the Kenza Cosmetics thing and then the redacted girl thing and then it was like Trisha Paytas and you know it was just one thing after another for Gabby for a while there um and Gabby equated that to being in a toxic relationship with everyone on the internet who's all psychologically abusing her which is just like not true first of all a lot of people defended her there were a lot of people in various situations who made videos defending Gabby Hanna and trying to see the good side it was not all hate and second of all, millions of people were not contacting Gabby Hanna. There were like, there were drama channels talking about her and there were probably, you know, a good number of people who were commenting and like had opinions and stuff like that, but she was not being harassed by millions of people. That's like, just literally not true. Additionally, like, not everything that hurts you is abuse. Something can be bad, something can hurt you, something can really mess up your mental health, but that doesn't mean it's inherently abuse. And I think Gabby keeps doing this thing where she like overstates things and she like exaggerates or uses hyperbole or whatever and calls everything that hurt her abuse. And it really turns off a lot of people to like hearing her out because it's like, that's not what abuse is. You can put up a definition of abuse on the screen if you want to and insist that what happened to you fits that definition, but like, 
That's not what that, words have meaning. Words mean things. For someone to perpetuate narcissistic abuse against you, that person has to be a narcissist, first of all. Narcissistic personality disorder is exceedingly rare. I sincerely doubt that all of these narcissists are surrounding Gabby Hanna and harassing her. She can just say people bullied her. She can say people harassed her. She can say, you know, all of these different things. But when she hunches everything up to like, it was abuse, it just, it makes her really hard to, to sympathize. So following that logic of like overstating the harm done and things like that, she multiple times says that Trisha Paytas and Trisha Paytas alone made Gabby Hanna feel suicidal. That is not okay to say. I've talked about this before on my channel. Um, it's not okay to point fingers at someone and like say like, you're the reason I wanted to die. Um, like this isn't 13 reasons why. That book and series were incredibly unhealthy and damaging and we should not be taking from it and, you know, pulling from there, which is what I feel like Gabby's doing. Like, it, it's, it's okay to say someone hurt you. It's okay to say, like, you were in a dark place after something somebody said. It's not okay to be like, you made me suicidal. Like, that's, in my opinion, incredibly emotionally manipulative. And also, it's really putting off responsibility for your own mental health onto someone else. Um, like, you are responsible for taking care of yourself and for your mental health. And you know what? There are probably cases where maybe it is fair to say that somebody made you feel that way um, privately, but that is not a public accusation to make. And frankly, I think it's something to talk to your therapist about. I don't think it's appropriate to go to anybody and say, you're the reason I wanted to hurt myself. Um, I don't know what good comes out of a statement like that. It's just emotionally manipulative. This next thing I want to bring up is kind of like a quibble. Um, she said at one point, like, it's really weird how people accuse me of drumming up drama to promote things. Like, I just like to make art out of the things that I've gone through. Like, I'm not, I'm just making art out of my experiences as if she didn't understand what people meant. Like, people don't say that she drums up drama because her art is about some of that drama. People say that she drums up drama because she will literally start fights that have been gone, that have been dead. She'll resurrect fights um, right before she's about to release something. She literally did that this year with Rachel Oates and other people before she released this docu-series. Um, so it was really odd to me that she acted like that wasn't a reasonable thing for people to think. And then later in the video, she even literally says like, oh yeah, of course I like to use these situations for promotion. Like, of course I do. And it's like, well, okay, if you could acknowledge that here, why are you saying it was weird that people thought you were doing that? Like what? If you, if it's a thing you admit that you do, then I don't know. It didn't make sense to me. Like I said, it was a quibble. It's not a huge problem, but still. I mentioned that Gabby brought up a lot of random kind of irrelevant things in relation to Trisha Paytas in an attempt to kind of paint Trisha as this person who lies a lot and who really can't trust, which like, fair, fair. Um, but there was one thing she brought up that I just really didn't, didn't really land with me. She pulls up this screenshot of Trisha talking to someone, I think Gabrielle DiMartino, Gabby DiMartino, I don't know, um, where I guess Gabby DiMart DiMartino had like told someone something Trisha said or did or something like that and Trisha was upset about it and Gabby had like apologized and then Trisha texted them like um oh well should I tell blah 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 that you said this about them should I should I make a video about it um in my understanding when I read this text message it was Trisha trying to say like how would you feel if I did this to you how would you feel if you were in the position I'm in right now I didn't take it as Trisha saying, I'm going to make this video and I'm going to put you on blast if you don't do what I want. I took it as Trisha saying like, how does it make you feel to think about me doing that to you after what you've done to me? Um, and Gabby's like, Gabby Hannah says, you know, that's blackmail and puts up like the definition of blackmail. And I don't know, it's just, I was like, that's not blackmail. And you've already made Trisha look plenty bad. Like you didn't really need to put in this like false thing. Um, 
you know. And then the last thing that I want to talk about that Gabby said about Trisha is um, Gabby basically accused Trisha of ripping off her music videos and like pulls up some some like individual clips and like compares them side by side and says she feels like Gabby or she feels like Trisha has been like obsessed with her and like copying her and like this is like really really creepy and disturbing. I'm skeptical of her claim here because Gabby has accused other singers of ripping off her music videos and I did not really agree that they had been ripped off. Um, so it's like this is a thing she said before about other people and I didn't agree with that then. So I'm skeptical now. I'm not sure. It, like maybe she copied them, maybe she didn't, I don't know. I think that would be like a whole other video that I would need to make, frankly. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in that, me like comparing Gabby Hanna and Trisha Paytas music videos to see if I think Trisha copied her. Let me know. But I just, I thought it was such a weak point that again, Trisha already looks plenty bad in this video. I, I didn't really think it needed to be included. I don't think it really gave any more credence to what Gabby had already said. So those are my thoughts on Gabby's docu-series episode about Trisha Paytas. That's kind of, you know, all my issues with the docu-series. I already talked about the good parts of the docu-series. Um, if you want to watch any of the episodes she's put out, maybe you can watch this one, honestly. I wouldn't have watched it if I didn't feel like it would be good content for a video, so do with that what you will. I wouldn't watch it again. <laughs> but, you know, it's a little bit... Like I said, I think it's one of the better episodes of her docuseries so far. So, yeah. Let me know what you think. I make videos every Wednesday and also most Thursdays and sometimes any other time I feel like it. But definitely on Wednesdays you can expect videos. Um, I hope you liked this one. I'm gonna be trying to post it on Thursday. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that the captions will be up by the time it's like public, but if the captions are not up yet, I'm sorry. YouTube auto-generates captions and sometimes it takes longer depending on how long the video is, but yeah, I'm hopeful that they will be there. I know people like to have captions, I like having captions, um, so yeah. I'm gonna try to edit this and get this uploaded as soon as I can so that it will have enough time to process and add the captions, but if not, I apologize in advance. Um, anyway, yeah. so. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and yeah, bye.